Well, Don, here on the Argo bench as they get ready for OT, the big question for the Argos is, will Ricky Foggy be available to play? He took an awful big hit uh, late in that late touchdown drive, and uh, he's got blurred vision. You may be able to see he's holding an ice pack to his head right now. He's not going to go in until his vision clears. The question is, will it be before overtime is over or is, uh, is done? Willie Gillis will start, obviously, in overtime. And one final thought about OT, the Argo defense has spent about three quarters of this ball game chasing around the fleet foot at Doug Flutie. You had a word with a couple of the Argo defenders. They admit they're exhausted, and I wonder if they have enough left to play two five-minute halves. Don? Well, it's been a tough year, Scott, for quarterbacks in the Canadian Football League. Matt Dunnigan hurt. Uh, Ricky Foggy hurt now. Kent Austin out of the Saskatchewan lineup. John Congemi hurt over in uh, Ottawa. Well, when a football player is hurt uh, within the boundaries and when he's hit while he's up, uh, there's not much you can do about it. But you certainly want to eliminate football players being hit when they're already down. And uh, that looked like that was the case with Foggy. He was already down, and then uh, two more players piled on, got penalized for it, but Foggy's out of the game. The Rocket will return the kickoff to start overtime. He tried to stay in bounds, but he ran out of room. And Willie Gillis continues to direct the attack. First and 10 from his own 54. The screen to Kelly. He had some problems getting control of the football, and he runs it down to the 36. First and 10 at that point, tripped up by Robin Belanger. Kelly had a little bit of trouble when he tried to hang on to the football, but it might have helped the timing of the play. What it did is it gave uh, the offensive lineman a little more time to get downfield. Watch Kelly bobble it, but the offensive lineman now turn around, they look for people to hit. Keith Kelly beat out Kevin Smelly at training camp, and the Bishop, Bishop's product got the number one job. Dan Ferrone is the injured Toronto Argonaut. Well, that's an amazing guy, and you wonder why he hasn't carried the ball yet on this drive. Maybe that's why. They just want to come in there and make sure that every, somebody has to hit the pinball in every play. And this guy has certainly played on every play. He'll make five yards look exciting. A five-yard game looks exciting when a pinball has the ball. Jet lag always has an effect when teams travel to the West Coast. Here's the reverse with Daryl Smith. That one was designed a little differently as Daryl Smith cut inside instead of going wide. Daryl Smith, if you ever saw him, uh, just in uh, workout gear, shorts and a shirt. This guy is put together. I mean, he is built like Conan the Barbarian. And watch the way he makes that move back inside. People glance off of him. You don't usually see a receiver that can run with the authority that Daryl Smith does. Well, that's not going to make Adam Rita very happy. You don't want your special teams to be one man violation. short. Whenever, what happens, like Ferroni was hurt, right? So what the special teams coach does is he scratches Ferroni and he puts probably Schmidt or Kardashian in his place. Now somebody got mixed up and I see down on the on the bench Ferroni's trying to explain to somebody hey you guys knew I was hurt. So it will be a 30 yard field goal attempt by Lance Charlie. Just gave him a better angle. So the Argos are back in front by three with 218 remaining in this first five minute overtime period. Raymond Etheridge on the kickoff return finds a hole. Goodbye. Toronto's been on the field too long. Once Etheridge 
gets going. The missile is all the way down at the end for the touchdown. 94 yards for Ray Etheridge. He has a sign on the back of his car that reads sweet sensation. And how sweet that was for the BC Lions and owner Murray Pezzel. The point after makes it a 45-41 game. BC in front with 2.06 remaining in this first overtime half. Etheridge just outran everybody. And it looked like Toronto, having played so much defense, just couldn't make that reaction that you need on special teams. You don't see many people coming in and sliding in front of people like you usually do on a kick return. I think Toronto's tired. Well, it was the rocket the fans on the West Coast paid to see tonight. But it was the missile. There's Obilovich. Has delighted the fans here at BC Place. Hobie and uh, his equipment manager, Kato, are celebrating together. First overtime half. Flutie in all sorts of trouble. And he just to flip the ball away. Incomplete. He threw that under him. I wonder if that's intentional grounding. I guess you're allowed to throw it underhand if you're getting tackled and your knees are almost touching and you'd like to throw it away. Well, there was a receiver in the general area. Say Alexander was there. Somebody's in the vicinity. This is a tremendous effort coming back on Flutie. Warren sort of keeps his ground and he knows that Flutie is one of those scramblers, but Hallman makes a big play and Warren is there to wrap him up. 